Hi, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to my very first reading rush. If you've seen my TBR, I have two specific books that I've set aside for this week and that is The Glass Hotel and The House at the Bottom of the Lake, which I'm very excited about. I'm a little nervous because, as I said, it's my very first reading rush. I don't know what vlogging for a week is like. We will see. I'm also traveling this week, so we'll see how that impacts this reading rush journey <laughs> anyway i will see you tomorrow good morning i've already had breakfast and done my makeup and i i still have up some things to do before i can get started on my reading today uh, i've also checked the first picture challenge of uh, the reading rush and it was to recreate a book cover and I chose Eleanor Oliphant. Uh, I used old matches and a yellow piece of paper to recreate the cover and it was actually fun and I need to edit that picture and post it. Also today, this was sort of a last minute decision but um, before quarantine I used to take ballet classes my teacher there she's constantly getting certified on these different things she became certified in like pilates and uh other methods that i'm not <laughs> fully aware of there's one that's just like healthy bones for ballerinas so she's constantly looking for people to sort of test all these new methods on and she had an empty slot for today and I volunteered and I'm super excited to see her because it's been months since I've gone to the studio and had a class with her. It's not going to be ballet, it's probably going to be a version of stretching and Pilates, I'm guessing. Um, either way, I'm excited. As I've said, I have some other things to do before I can get started on my reading. And yeah, it's going to be a great day. Day one. <laughs> okay, so I just finished everything that I had to do. Yes, I changed, I had to do a self-tape. And it's already time to go start making lunch because I'll take it with me when I go to um, the workout and I have to change for the workout and I have not read a word today. It's going great. <laughs> so here's the lunch I made for later. It's buckwheat, chicken, cheese and tomatoes. And I also have some iced coffee. They say that home is where your heart is I guess I haven't found my home Okay, so I finished the workout. It was so good. Um, we talked about how by stimulating different parts of your brain you can improve your stretches and different parts of your body and now I need to find a place to eat my lunch and I'll probably listen to an audiobook while I'm on my way home and we keep driving round in circles afraid to call each place our own and are we say there's linings made of silk okay so i took a nap <laughs> because i had a terrible headache when i got home um i think there was something wrong with my sleep last night um i slept enough hours but for some reason i woke up really tired the nap really helped uh and i listened to the bell jar audiobook on my way home I think I have like an hour of the audiobook left so I think I'm going to finish it today right now I'm enjoying it so much I think I'm going to continue doing my cross stitching uh, while I listen this is a project that I started like a month ago maybe <laughs> I mostly only do this 
when I'm listening to audiobooks. It's very handy. I highly recommend. Our silver linings now. And are we there yet? And are we there yet? And are we there yet? Home, home, home. I just finished the bell jar and I. I don't know what to think. Let me tell you about the book. If you don't know what the bell jar is about, uh, it was published in 1963 and it follows Esther Greenwood, who is a college student. And in the beginning of the book, she travels to New York because she's selected for a month long summer um, internship. As a guest editor at a magazine, she wants to be a writer. She writes poetry. And it starts off with that month that she spends in New York and the people that she meets there. Um, and throughout her stay in New York, she she very much becomes an observer. She doesn't really um, feel part of the larger group of girls that are in that internship with her. <clears throat> As the book progresses, you kind of see her feeling lost, feeling unmotivated. And as I said, she's very much an observer. She is, there's a lot of confusion on her part towards um, the societal norms, uh, girls and women, how they should behave, what they should strive for. And after that month long internship she moves home and slowly you sort of see her go through a mental breakdown basically i loved the way it was written it was very much matter of fact it was uh so funny at times and crisp she you know she has a boyfriend and she recalls her time with him and sort of the things that he would do and how she was she felt like she was supposed to uh behave and there are certain like revelations that she expresses towards like vir virtue and pureness of women compared to men and she was pondering the double standard and there's a lot of that there's a lot of her as I said, observing the societal norms and questioning them. You also see her thought process as she sort of, I don't want to say that she descends into madness, but I really, really enjoyed it. There's some um, problematic language, the racist remarks, homophobic remarks. Anyway, I really enjoyed this one. I'm so happy I finally read it. I have not really heard of it before, but lately it's been coming up everywhere. And the library had the audiobook. That is done. That's my first book of the reading rush done. And with that, I actually completed two challenges. A book that starts with the, the bell jar and a book that's set on another continent. The bell jar is set in America. What's next? So it's 9.15 and I think I will start the glass hotel and see how far in will I get tonight and I'll update you tomorrow. It's 2 p.m. and I've been running errands all day so I've not been reading or updating you. Between last night and this morning I did get to the third chapter of the glass hotel. There's not much to tell you yet i'm um, not really sure what's happening um the first two chapters were sort of giving the backstory of two of the characters i'm not sure who is supposed to be our lead character yet so far i'm enjoying it i guess <laughs> also the photo challenge today is to cosplay um a character from a book i'm thinking Camilla from The Secret History. So I'm going to try and create a sort of dark academia preppy look. Two jumps in a week, I bet you think that's pretty clever, don't you boy? Flying on your motorcycle, watching all the ground beneath you. 
so it's already 7 p.m. and I read for a while, I took a nap, I worked a little, I took the picture for the reading rush challenge and now I need to work out, so I'm gonna do that. You'd kill yourself for recognition, kill yourself to never ever stop. Turning into something you are not Don't leave me high So it's 11.36 and I'm done reading for tonight I'm just going to load the dishwasher, um, brush my teeth and go to bed But I did manage to get to page uh, 100 out of 300 of the Glass Hotel which I think it's pretty good if I, I don't remember if I told you that I'm a slow reader but I am um, I'm gonna tell you about the book as I load the dishwasher I definitely read the synopsis at one point when I added the book to my TBR but it's been so long I did not remember what the book was supposed to be about so I was expecting a book that was centered around a hotel but so far the hotel was only featured in the third chapter i think we're following different people each chapter is solely focused on them it's also like jumping um different timelines all these people are connected in some way i'm very curious to see how mm, the hotel is connected with them it's very hard to explain what the book is about just because there's not a linear plot i mean the book is called the glass hotel so i'm guessing it has a big role in the story but so far it's been only you know mentioned in passing and i really do love like the premise of the hotel itself it's it's situated in the wilderness of british columbia the only way to access the hotel is by boat because there are no roads that lead to and out of it and it's like a five star luxury hotel for people who want to go to the wilderness but don't but I want to do that comfortably, I guess. Uh, it actually sounds like a great place to vacation. <laughs> so it has that a little creepy, a little secluded feel to it. And I was hoping that we would stay there longer. So I'm intrigued to see how we'll get back to the hotel in British Columbia. Because right now we're in New York. It's hard to explain without spoiling and i don't even know at one point of the book does the spoiling begins if it's in the first 30 percent of the book is that a spoiler i don't know but i'm not going to risk it and tell you anything else i'm also trying to go to bed earlier tonight as i've said i've just not been sleeping well and not even in terms of how much i'm sleeping i'm sleeping enough hours but oh no. And tomorrow morning, my sister and I are going to get a massage because she got a gift certificate for her birthday. That will be, <clears throat> I would say, fun. Uh, my muscles are so tight that every time I get a massage, it's usually a pretty painful ordeal, uh, like my upper back and stuff. I will update you tomorrow. Good morning. <laughs> It's 12 p.m. We finished our massage, which was painful but good. Uh, we grabbed coffee and now we're on our way home. Also, we're catching a train to St. Petersburg tonight, so we need to pack. And that's that. My castle crumbled overnight. I brought a knife to a gunfight. Took the crown, but it's all right. All the liars are calling me one. Okay, so we're home and here's what needs to happen today. Since we're leaving, I'm making both lunch and dinner right now. I have to pack. I'm also thinking of starting to edit this vlog and maybe record a cover or to, to use as the music in the vlog. And I think that's it. So I don't know how much I will actually be reading, but I'll definitely read on the train ride. It's like three hours long, so 
Also, the challenge for today is to take a photo of your pet with your current read. And I don't own a pet, but I own my little babies, my green babies. So that also needs to happen. A lot of things to do. <laughs> Nobody surfed for me for months. I'm doing better than I ever was. Cause my babies feel like a daydream. Walking with his head down. I'm the one who's walking too. So call it what you want, yeah, call it what you want to My baby fly like a jet stream High above the whole scene, loves me like a brand new so Hello from our hotel We survived and I ran the whole time So I'm not enjoying the book I read 150 pages last night And I only have 50 left And I have a much better idea what the book is about I don't know if I already told you I was expecting for some reason a mystery centered around like a cre creepy secluded hotel but it's absolutely not it <laughs> it's all about a white collar crime and sort of following the repercussions of big scale white collar crime I have to say I do like the writing style I do like the way it's written I like the sort of sophisticated way she went about connecting the hotel to everybody basically the hotel is the meeting place of a lot of these characters in different times they you know that's where they met that's where the initial contact with them was but the hotel does not is not part of the story at all except for like that, that initial point in so many relationships the story itself is not eliciting any emotion from me i don't really care about any characters so i'm disappointed just because i was expecting this to be something very memorable so that's that and i'm hoping to finish it today so today we're walking around st petersburg i've been here so many times and i love this city so much but i'm going to show my sister a few of my favorite spots i'll try to update you but no promise you want, yeah call it what you want to all my flowers grew back as thorns my windows boarded up after the storm he built a fire just to keep me warm Drama queens taking swings, all the jokers dressing up as kings. They fade to nothing when I look at him. And I know I'll make the same mistakes every time. Bridges burn and never learn. At least I did one thing right. I did one thing right. I'm laughing with my lover, making for time to cover. Trust him like a brother. Yeah, you know I did one thing right. Starry eyes sparking up my darkest night My babies feel like a daydream Walking with his head down I'm the one who's walking too So call it what you want Yeah, call it what you want to My babies fly like a jet stream High above the whole scene Loves me like a brand new So call it what you want Yeah, call it what you want to It's now much later It's 9 40 p.m. Ugh, it was such a long day and I'm so tired Basically, we walked all around St. Petersburg today uh, We had lunch and then we met up with our parents and drove to the Gulf of Finland That's where we are now It's so beautiful The trees, the water, it's so wonderful It's been very rainy and very windy today I did get to read a few pages here and there um, and I only have like 30 pages left of the book I already have some more thoughts on it but I'm going to wait till I finish the book to let you know which I think I'm going to do now Trips on the road Walking you home You kissed me at your door Pulling me close Beg me stay over so I just finished the book and I think I'm going to give it three stars, but I will talk to you tomorrow about it some more. But I'm over this roller coaster. I'm a crawl out the window now. Getting good at saying gotta bounce. Honestly, you always let me down. And I know I'm not just hanging out. 19, but you act 25 now. Knees weak, but you talk pretty proud. Wow, ripped jeans and a cup that
but you just down Take me where the music ain't too loud Trade drinks, but you don't even know her Save me to the party I hope you can hear me It's very windy but The sun is very strong and very hot So I thought I would tell you about my thoughts on the Glass Hotel but I'm not sure you'll be able to hear me because of the wind so the main message of the book is basically that we're all corruptible under the right circumstances and the things that we judge other people for doing are the things that we would very easily justify if we were to do um, which I really enjoyed and there's also a topic that's explored of sort of mass delusion in different forms that it takes. Things that I really enjoyed about the Glass Hotel were first of all the way all the characters and events ended up being connected in the end. I also really enjoyed the writing. It's concise, it's very visual, it's compelling and I definitely want to now check out Station Eleven. The third thing that I liked was so we're following this white color crime and we're following all these different people that were involved or connected to the crime and we sort of see their personal journeys throughout, throughout you know, getting into something that's illegal but also gives you a great opportunity, gives your family stability. This is, you know, illegal the same as immoral. I really loved that part of the book that really concentrated on guilt and morality. Things that I didn't like about the book, first of all, one of the lead characters, Vincent, is her name. She is, she does have um, an unfortunate childhood, but the way she goes through life is very, she's just very tragic. She doesn't strive towards anything. Things happen that are her choices, but she doesn't view them as her choices. She sees them as, well, this is my life, but this is what I have to do to survive. She's always in survival mode. She's like faulting everything else instead of taking credit for her own decisions in life and she's unmotivated and she sort of lives this unsustainable lifestyle and doesn't really think about the future repercussions and it's just very hard to it's hard to feel for a character that just feels bad for themselves the whole time oh there's also an element uh, like a very slight element of the paranormal that was added and it's fine if it's you know contained within one storyline one character arc but it was sort of shared between different characters which I guess adds to the topic of the mass delusion but it was just a little too far the paranormal <laughs> um, I don't know it took me out of the story made me roll my eyes a few times anyway all of this to say that I really did enjoy the book I gave it three stars uh, maybe even 3.5 stars but it just I was expecting a different book and that's my own fault that I was expecting a mystery thriller about a hotel but also this book didn't really elicit many emotions or feelings it's not going to be my favorite book so those are my thoughts on the glass hotel I can't even open my eyes because it's so bright <laughs> yeah we're just getting coffee and I've already started meeting uh, the house at the bottom of the lake, which I'm enjoying at 50 pages in. Hello, it's 9 p.m. and I've not read a single page today because we've been out all day and i'm going to try and read we're leaving tomorrow good morning so we just had breakfast and we're going home today so we have a seven hour drive ahead of us to drive back to moscow and we're not even counting the stops so it might be longer so my reading plan for today is to obviously read uh, listen to an audiobook in the car 
and maybe catch a page or two of the House at the Bottom of the Lake. I'm halfway through that book, I'm really enjoying it. I'm not promising anything because eight hours in the car is not easy and we'll see what happens. <laughs> on your door I never needed anything more whispers of are you sure never have I ever before but I can see it's lost in the memory all you slipped away in a moment in time cause it was never mine and I can see it's twisted and She's August slipped away like a bottle of wine. Cause it would never I am home. It's now like 9 p.m. We've been driving all day and I've been sitting all day. My whole body feels so like tight. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do like a stretch routine right now just to move my body a little bit. I did get to listen to a big chunk of why we sleep which is great and i'm still enjoying this book so much highly recommend this to everybody i've also been enjoying the new taylor swift album i love her so much i'm taking my time with it and going you know song by song to not overwhelm myself good morning Oh, uh, it is the last day of the reading rush. What a week it's been. Um, so this morning I finished the house at the bottom of the lake. I looked it up on Goodreads and it doesn't have a very high average rating. And I think that's because the book is, um, it has like an ambiguous ending. It does not give you any explanation about the house at the bottom of the lake it doesn't spoon feed you any information and you don't really know what happened why did it happen what does this mean which i enjoyed um another thing that people are upset about is that it's not really horror which i cannot comment on because i don't read a lot of horror but I was booked by this book. <laughs> I was scared. I could definitely see that this is not the kind of horror book that has like horrific things in it, gore or anything like that. But what it does have is this continuous feeling of dread, of something lurking just around the corner or maybe even in the room with you, but you can't see it. I was reading Gabby's review from Gabby Reads. The book triggered her fear of, you know, holding uh, your breath for too long underwater, running out of breath underwater, which is not a fear that I have. And I, it made me think of how the way the book is written, the way it does not give you any specific explanations, or information and sort of leaves a lot of space for you to fill the gaps with your own fears I automatically would put in like the worst thing I can come up with in that space and you sort of scare yourself and the fear that was triggered for me was that I didn't even know that was like a fear of mine being somewhere inside not outside it doesn't work for me outside inside a house or apartment or a room in complete darkness but with a flashlight i don't know why <laughs> i think it's because when you're in a room and it's so dark you're only able to illuminate like a tiny circle it's almost like giving so much light to that little corner amplifies how much you don't see and how much can be hidden everywhere else and also like the movement of it i always sort of uh, i'm scared of you know turning it too fast and landing on a face or something you know it's just oh did i tell you what the book was about okay so the book is about these two 17 year old kids who go on their very first date canoeing on a lake and while they're canoeing, they discover a second lake which is more secluded um, and within that second lake, they find 
um, sort of a hidden away tunnel that's hidden by like branches or bushes or something and it's this concrete tunnel that has graffiti all over it and they go through that tunnel it becomes gets really low so they even have to lay down in the canoe and push the ceiling to sort of get the canoe moving which if you're afraid if you have claustrophobia that part wasn't great <laughs> and they end up in this third lake that they didn't even know existed and the water is all murky and there's this weird smell of old age and they see a roof in the water and discover a house at the bottom of the lake and they decide to dive in and explore it and see what's inside and what is it what, what is it doing there and all of those things i gave it four stars because i really did enjoy it it did provide me with those scary <laughs> feelings and thoughts i was you know creeped out a lot but anyway that is my third book of the reading rush and i am now going to finish uh listening to why we sleep which i as i said only have like an hour left and as i said i will have half a day to read anything else but i did find the audiobook in my library that's available of the rest of us just live here by patrick ness so i added that one and another one that I found in my ebooks, Dear Ijiawale by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, Feminist Manifesto and 15 Suggestions. I loved, loved, loved her book, Why We Should All Be Feminist. So I'm excited to read this one. But I'm currently listening to you While We Sleep, and I'm continuing this little thing. Um, I just finished sort of like this portion. I like it. I just wanted you to know that this is me trying. I just wanted you to know that this is me trying. They told all of my cages were mental, so I got wasted like all my potential. Now my word should be killed when I'm mad. Uh, it is now seven. 30 p.m. and I finished Why We Sleep. Five stars, loved it so much, incredible. Everyone should read this, perfection. And I'm halfway through We All Just Live Here. I think that's what it's called. And I'm really enjoying it. I'm not really sure what's happening, but I love it. 20 minutes ago, I it occurred to me to check the last challenge of the Instagram challenge of the reading rush and it's to show off an artwork based on a book and I'm not a visual artist but I do write music and I do write songs specifically inspired by books in terms of the song that I chose I chose the song Le Monde uh, based on inspired by um, Red White and Royal Blue I didn't believe till I met you I hope you don't mind I, I, I hope you don't mind I didn't want this, no But now I'm in it, oh boy I was scared before But losing you would be so much worse But I'm excited <laughs> And I'm going to continue to listen to the book And I will update you when I'm done I know you think it's just ambition and power seeking Well, for goodness sake, I'm a politician And I wouldn't be a politician hey, is over it ended last night at midnight and i have completed six books in seven days which does not seem right because just yesterday i finished four it's been an interesting experiment 100 percent i used to um read around three to five books every week during quarantine and then in the month of june i specifically 
challenged myself to relax on the book front and not do this race with myself for no reason and you know not stress about how much time finishing a book takes me so I was a little worried about doing the reading rush for this reason but I think I'm good <laughs> I did not feel a compulsion to finish books which is great I would have been fine with finishing three books or two books even so I'm sort of happy that my um, mental state did not change because of the reading rush um, let me Oh, so much better. I need to talk to you about the two books that I finished yesterday that I've not had a chance to tell you about. Um, the Rest of Us Just Live Here by Patrick Ness. I gave it four stars. I really, really enjoyed this book. This is a book that talks about a small town where paranormal things happen. It's always this like small town and there is a chosen one who has to save humanity and so Patrick Ness wrote this book about this kind of town but focuses on people who are not the chosen ones. In this world he created there are indie kids who have superpowers and therefore they are always you know connected with some big weird thing fight with a monster or something and the regular people. Throughout the book, something is happening in this town. At the beginning of every single chapter, there is like a few words about the alternative story, the story of the chosen one from this town fighting these monsters. And it would give like two sentences of like, chapter the six is where she battles the queen of darkness. Or something so like it gives you a little snippet of what is happening uh, in terms of the um, fighting the paranormal bad stuff that's happening but the book is about this friend group it's very much character driven there's not much happening it's a group of friends they're trying to get to graduation and each battling with their own Stuff that's happening in their lives so the topics that this book is exploring is first of all friendship is a big one in here and how we all have insecurities in our friend groups uh, our main character Mike is worried that he's his friends don't need him as much that he needs them there's constant insecurity over his friendships and I feel like we've all been there so it was great having that addressed um, there's also obviously the topic of mental illness and there is a wonderful wonderful scene which I loved so much when Mike goes to a therapist that he has worked with before on his OCD and they have this wonderful conversation and there's also the theme of family biological and found family which I really enjoyed it's short and funny and important and I really enjoyed it uh, and then I read Dear Ijeawale by Chiamanda Ngozi Adichie and it's another five stars from Chamanda Ngozi Adichie. She is incredible. This is a tiny, tiny book basically addressed. It's like a letter that she addressed to her friend when she gave birth to a baby girl and asked her advice raising her girl a feminist. And so she writes, so the book is basically the, uh, the letter where she gives 11 suggestions and they're incredible and they're so, oh, I almost cried several times during that letter. I'm not going to retell you everything because as I said, it's a tiny book, so go and read it. But the things that I loved is how she empathizes language, how she says that first of all, it's important what language you use when you talk about women. It's just, it's beautiful and it's so open-minded and I loved it, loved it, loved it. So my camera is about to die. It's been a few hours. <laughs> but i am back and i'm ready to wrap up the reading rush so in these seven days i read six books first of all i read the bell jar by sylvia plath and i gave it three stars i really enjoyed that book very glad i finally read this classic then i read the glass hotel i also enjoyed i was initially disappointed because i was expecting a different book 
but after giving it some time i really did like the book and i gave it 3.5 stars then i went on to a house at the bottom of the lake which i gave four stars i was super creeped out but i had a fun fun time reading this book then i finished why we sleep which i gave five stars and i finished the week off with uh the rest of us just live here which i gave four stars and dear Ijeawele, which i gave five stars so all in all i have two five star reads this week which is great uh funnily enough they're both non-fiction so i feel like this was a very successful reading rush i had a lot of fun with the instagram challenges i hope you've been following me along as i was doing them and i hope you enjoy this vlog this is my first reading rush as i said many times and hopefully there will be more let me know if you read any of the books that i mentioned or if you have recommendations for me please comment them below and thank you so much for watching